Hello, welcome back. This is part two of the Painting the Wizards video. As I said previously, if you didn't see it, I'm going to paint them all different colours. Uh, we've already done the red and the blue. This is what they look like. I was very pleased with them. And today we're going to be challenging ourselves with a yellow and also a green. Uh, we're going to start with the green because I've painted green stuff before. As I have heard, yellow is a difficult colour, so we will start easily. Uh, there'll be a list of all the paints used in the description if that's something that you want to see or maybe follow along with. Uh, this green was incredibly transparent. It took lots of layers to get a decent base coat down. So it was green for the robes, and then I thought it would be nice to have earthy tones, so I'd go for a brown across the cloak. This brown I actually really like, but I thought it was too light. No, it's just it was just too bright. I liked it, but it was too bright. So I decided to go over it very quickly before I spent too much time doing it with Rhinox Hide, a paint that everybody knows and has usually. And then it instantly looked a lot better against this green. Uh, so now the robes can be the focus rather than the cloak. So a few more layers of the green and it's still actually a little bit transparent but given the zenithal highlight behind I wasn't too upset about that. So now I'm going to start mixing in a brighter colour starting at about 50-50 mix. It'll be a transparent paint so I can do several layers. So now slowly adding a lighter tone of green, uh, bit by bit as the mixture goes along. It'll be a thin down paint so I can just do lots of transparent layers. And then we end up using a pure form of this green. Again, it's a thin paint and we're just doing several layers. We get to the point where I'm getting little return from that mixture, so I start adding a lighter tone again. And you can basically do this as much as you like. The more that you add, the more colors and tones that you go through, the more layers that you use, the smoother finish that you will get. That's what I'm trying to work towards is being able to do more and more layers and use more and more tone and get a better contrast. As with always, you need to consider the direction of your brush stroke. So I'm trying to pull down into the areas that I want to be lighter as more of the paint will be left there. It's time to change up from just green. For my brightest parts of the miniature, I want them to stand out a little bit more. So I'm starting to add yellow. That will change the hue and the color a bit, but it's also a much lighter finish as well, obviously. Uh, here I'm starting to kind of dab the brush against it to give more of a textured finish. That will take away from it being such a smooth thing and then the robes will start to look like they are a texture like they are a material that a wizard would wear. Still considering painting in smaller areas and the direction that I'm painting in. Even though I'm kind of dabbing the brush, I'm still thinking about where these little extra bits of paint will be left. And that's it for the robes. They look really cool, but it's always hard to tell when you have bits of the miniature that aren't painted and bits that are. So it's time to start painting the cloak. 
I'll be doing exactly the same thing with the cloak, just slowly working up to a lighter and lighter tone. My plan is to leave quite a lot of shadow in the cloak and to define the light sources in front of the miniature, again helping to keep the robes as the key focal point. As you can see here, again, I'm stabbing the miniature with my paintbrush rather than just doing smooth strokes, uh, hoping to get a bit of texture left out of it. And this is the complete end result of what I got from the green miniature. So I really like the end result of the green wizard. I think the brown cloak and the greens go really well together. I think the yellow and the green really help brighten that up. I think it looks really cool. And so over to the more challenging yellow. Just like when I painted the red wizard, I don't want to start at the color I want to end on. So I'm going to paint this orange and then go yellow on top. So I end up with this nice kind of really warm, sunny, yellow tone. Now I'll leave the orange in the shadowed areas, but I'm still using quite a bright orange because I know that painting yellow on top of other colors, it doesn't come through particularly well. I really couldn't decide what cloak would go well with yellow robes so I've done black for a high contrast which I think is a mistake. Then just like every other time I'm using a thinned or transparent paint and I'm just going over layer by layer, glazing, whatever you want to call it, getting going into smaller and smaller areas, trying to brighten up the bits that I want to be highlighted. The yellow is a difficult colour to get onto the miniature, so it's taking a lot of layers, but that's okay, I'm in no rush. I'm getting to the point where I feel like I'm going over and over it again and while it's wet it looks yellow but then it dries up and I'm still left with just this tinted orange colour. So what I've decided to do is paint over those bits that I want to be the brightest in white. Now hopefully this is going to work. I'm going to then glaze over it with yellow. Perhaps won't be quite so sparing with this as it will be kind of a very very thin paint and it will help tie everything together. At least that's a theory, and I hope it works out. I actually quite like this step. It's quite nice to be able to pick out and have a clear difference because I'm painting in white, the bits that I want to be the brightest. And here's glazing the yellow on top, and it looks like it's all gonna work out okay. So say I'm glazing the areas around where I've just painted white as well, so it should all blend together, and the yellow is holding so much better on white than it was on the orange. And so now it's starting to actually look like yellow robes instead of orange robes. Because yellow is the colour I wanted the robes, I was happy to paint a fair amount of it white. It wasn't just in the tiny little areas. Then I might go over it again just to really brighten up the bits I want to be the brightest on the miniature. It 
It's at this stage that I feel like this is a failed project. I'm not enjoying the colour scheme. I think it's to do with the black cloak, and I actually gave up on it at this point. I decided that this was as far as I was going to take it. But after looking back and making this video, when I got to this point uh, in editing it, I thought, you know what, I really should finish this off just to see what it would look like complete. So that is what I've done. And I have to say, I actually quite like the end result. I'm still not sure on the black cloak, but I don't know what other color to do. Uh, any other bright colors just seem like they would be a weird mix to go with yellow. So I still think it's probably the best option, but it looks like I've ended up with a pretty bold yellow robe. And that was the challenge I set for myself when I painted this miniature. So in that sense, I would say it's a success. I actually quite like the end result. And now we have all four wizards that we can sit next to each other. And I think they match up quite nicely. They definitely look like they're part of a set, but because of the very bold, distinctive colors, um, clearly there is a difference between each of them. Using this in a tabletop game like Dungeons & Dragons, as I say, they can all specialize in different spells, and then the party can decide who they're going after based on resistances, vulnerabilities, spell lists, all that sort of thing. So it could make for a fairly dynamic combat scene. From a painting perspective, I'm pretty happy with all of the results. I think it was a nice little project to have. It was quite nice having a theme. Usually it's just one-offs uh, that I'm painting, just the odd monster. So for me, it's really nice to see something kind of come to a completion and have a set, have a theme. So I will try and do something like this again when I have the next opportunity. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Maybe even you learned something or I've inspired someone to start painting as that is what this channel is all about. If you have any questions, problems, suggestions, whatever you want, then just leave them in the comments and I will reply. Until next time, bye!